Bernie just won a Tony for the humans. I'm here at Glasshouse Tavern to talk to the star about awards, the realities of being a working actor, and feeling the burn. Hey Reed. Hey Beth. Thank you for coming here today. It's great to be here. All right, we have a lot to talk about, but we have to start with Tony Knight. What? I mean, <laughs> you've been an actor for such a long time. Yeah. Walk me through Tony Knight. And congratulations, by the way. Thank you. It was a great night. And um, I had been nominated two years ago for Casa Valentina, and I, I actually like winning better than losing. That's a shock. Which is crazy. What? Crazy, I know. <laughs> Nobody's going to believe that. Um, it was, uh, you know, it was thrilling. It was the terrible day of Orlando, of course, so yeah. that was hanging over. But, but uh, it's like the best sort of fantasy hangout in the world. Fantasy hangout because there are a lot of cool people. Oh, yeah. Everyone looks awesome. Everybody looks great, and everybody's in a good mood, and you know, you're sort of celebrating what you do in a, in the most profound way. There was a long pause before while they were opening that envelope. They couldn't get it open. <laughs> Killing us. You guys were just like, yes, yeah, and us. you sort of go into an alternate state of like suspended animation, I, I, as I'm thinking about it, where you're you're just sort of poised to go or not go and you know I'd had lots and lots of people saying very encouraging things to me for several weeks and you want to be careful to not get your great expectations all hopped up and get punked, get um, punked. yeah <laughs> um, nobody wants to get Tony punked no <laughs> and I had been a little Tony punked two years ago so uh, I, I was I think having been through it once before also made a huge difference uh, your speech was really beautiful. Thank you. I love that you started with your family. And I love that you gave a little actor realness. You've been an actor for a long time. You acknowledge that. And you acknowledge that it wasn't always 100% fabulous. It was pretty brutal for most of it. Most of it was pretty brutal. And you've yeah. talked about that a lot. So you started out of the gate strong with Gemini. With Gemini at the Helen Hayes, then the Little Theater. So the fact that I'm back there now is... <laughs> Crazy. Not for long, though. If you saw it in a movie, he starts his career, and he, you'd be like, it's a little neat. It's a little, <laughs> it's a little on the nose. On the nose. It's, uh, you have him go to a different theater. <laughs> <laughs> but you start with Gemini, which was a huge hit. Yep. Very famous TV commercials. Look that up. Yeah. And um, and then there was like a, a fallow period, maybe. There was there was a a, a rough. Um, I did a big movie with Arthur Penn in 1980. So that was about f three or four years later. Mm -hmm. Fantastic part, Four Friends it's called, and I'm still very proud of that movie, but it failed. It, it wasn't a hit. So uh, that sent me spiraling, you know, because it was uh, like when it was such a fluke that I got that great part anyway. But um, and then it was years of uh, little plays and regional theater and, uh, you know, wonderful jobs, but nothing led to anything else, it felt like. Yeah. For but somehow years. you kept up your perseverance, which I think is amazing. Well, you didn't I, go and become an accountant, which a lot of people do. I went to, in 94, as late as 94, I went to a career counselor who had successfully rehabilitated several of my friends, my actor career friends. Career rehab. Yeah, career rehab. And uh, I was like, well, she'll save me. She'll give me something else. And uh, after three months, she came back and said, I've got bad news. You're an actor. No, no, not that. <laughs> and she didn't give me my money back either. <laughs> and now? And now? You said the last eight years have been pretty I fab. Have been thrilling, thrilling, you know. Uh, if you had said to me when I was in Gemini at 22, just wait till you're 60. It's going to be <laughs> Nobody fantastic wants to hear that. when you're 60. I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> oh, <no. laughs> Who can wait that long? But here you are. Here I am. Do you feel vindicated? Is that a fair question? Uh, vindicated, I, I don't know if that's the word. Uh, the thing that's fascinating about having late career success is that all the people you want to have revenge on are dead. So there's nothing to be done about that. <laughs> that horrible so no high school drama teacher, gone. gone. <laughs> <laughs> what are you going to do? All right, let's talk about the humans. Okay. It's no secret that I adore this play. Yay. How is this character different for you from the other things that you've done? Well, I've never done anything like this part. I've never played anybody like Eric. He is less articulate than I am. He and does not have, like, 
most of the world, he does not have the luxury of self-examination. Mm. I usually play teachers or politicians or people's in, people who are in coats and ties. That's sort of my thing. And um, Eric is not in a coat and tie. What was most challenging for you? Just finding his rhythm. Uh, mm -hmm. Joe Mantello, our brilliant director, kept encouraging me to slow down. He said, when you move quickly and when you respond quickly, you seem smart. Hmm. And that's an amazing piece of direction because it's a technical note right. that when I got it, became psychological. That makes sense. Yeah. There's a lot to this play. You have recurring dreams in it. Mm -hmm. It touches on all kinds of, I want to see, I keep on using the word deep, which sounds kind of woo-woo, but uh, I All think kinds of it's it's an exploration issues. of sort of the terror that we all live with today, both emotional and uh, actual mm -hmm. and psychological, and uh, how we manage. And I think the message of the play, for lack of a better word, is that we as humans endure. Now, I've asked this of other members of your company, and no one's given me a really strong answer, so I'm uh, going to ask you. Okay. There's a lot of noise in this play. Yep. First of all, the set is amazing. David Zinn did an amazing job. Tony Award job. winning set. That's right. But the explanation is that the people upstairs are very noisy. We don't know what they're doing. What do you think that noise is coming from? I think that the, the no you'll notice in the play that nobody else mm -hmm. besides Eric, my character, responds to the noise in any kind of alarming way. They're just like, what's that? Mm -hmm. And Eric is ready to jump out of his skin. Yeah. So for me, the noise is um, his PTSD from 9-11. What do I think she's doing? Whoever knows what the people upstairs right. are doing. It's interesting that you use the word terror. It's actually really funny. It's one of the funniest plays I've ever uh, done. And what's, what's great about it is that there aren't any gags. It's not like ba dump ba dump ba dump no. It's the, the, the humor is from the recognition of what we all do. It's amazing. Uh, you, you sit there and you think, my mother said that same thing to me. It's fun and it's got a little horror film aspect to it too. Yeah, I, people, people seem to get really scared at the end, which I think is great. I think that's hard to do in a play, to actually yeah. scare people in a play. So I want to talk about your wife, Connie Shulman, who yeah. a lot of people know, now they know her from Orange is the New Black. She's Yoga Jones. Yoga Jones. You guys are like the Netflix poster couple. We like Netflix at our house. <laughs> because you were obviously on House of Cards. Vice President of the United States. <laughs> yes, the beleaguered. <laughs> Poor Donald Bly. Um, tell me about, about that stuff that you guys are both doing and, and both being binge watched. Do you binge watch each other? Uh, uh, yeah, you know, you you try to, you try to, and then life gets in the way. And you two are on their most successful shows. And Connie had taken 16 years off to raise our children, mm -hmm. and both kids were starting to act, and she said one day, well, maybe I'll try it again. I, you know, everybody else is doing it, I'll try. <laughs> the whole family. And the whole family, Peer I pressure. might as well. <laughs> and I thought, oh, how's this going to go? I just, <laughs> you know, it's been 16 years, she didn't have an agent anymore. And her second audition in 16 years was for Orange is the New Black. And now Amazing. she can't go 10 feet down the street without people wanting a selfie. <laughs> I can go anywhere, just <laughs> FYI. Because you're just a guy in a suit. <laughs> just a guy in a suit. <laughs> so don't be shy if you see me on the street and want a selfie. You can go right ahead and ask but, me. <laughs> all right, well, we have to go. But before we do, we have to talk about the humans campaign. So I mean, it's not really a campaign. Shows don't really campaign for the Tony. Right. Not really, a little bit, but it's, it's, it's really just art, come on. <laughs> Your publicist is going, yeah, we do, yeah, we do. But they, put, they gave us um, buttons with you and Jane. Jane was, I'm um, with her, you were with Feel the, the burn. burn. Yeah, really. I mean. Andy Snyder uh, of our press office had, it came to him in a dream, I think. It, he had this uh, thing, this flash of like, that's what we need to do. And uh, I I'm so glad I got nominated for Tony so they could actually use it. Well, you guys are moving to the Schoenfeld Theater. Yes. Excited about that? Amazingly ex excited. It, it, it will be my first time in a real fancy chandelier Broadway house. All right. Yeah. I'm really excited about that. 
Fancy chandelier house. Yeah. Yeah. That's that's you're living the dream. I'm living the dream. You're Hashtag the burn. living the dream. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you so much, Reed. It's great to talk to you. You too. You too. Thanks.